escaping the realm of darkness. The paranormal guys are on a quest to find the answers to the hard questions of where the normal meets the paranormal and the weird and where the natural meets the unnatural. So grab your holy water, call your mama, and get ready for the Paranormal Guys Podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Neil with the Paranormal Guys Podcast, and this is Steve. Steve, what? Steve with the Paranormal Guys Podcast. Yeah, he puts the pair in paranormal. I put the pair in that paranormal. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's All my right, new tagline. Yep. What's that? I, think I like that. That'll be my tagline. That'll be, he puts the pair in paranormal guys. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be afraid with me around. Oh, that would be a good idea. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today's date is October 8th, and we are recording for a November 17th release. Tonight's episode is a very interesting episode. Uh, We're going to be talking about a thing called Jumatria. Mm -hmm. I met a guy, um, Doug Rodriguez. Uh, We just started talking, and we started talking about Jumatria, Steve. Mm -hmm. Uh, The correlation of numbers and, like, how people's – Lives revolve around numbers. Even death revolves around numbers. Conspiracies. So tonight we're going to be bringing him on. I I think you're going to like it because it's a very interesting subject. I think it's right up your alley because you're the more conspiracy guy. I mean, I like conspiracies, but you're more into it than I am. Yeah. So I think you're going to really enjoy what he's going to bring to the table. It it reminds me of that movie with Nicolas Cage. Here I go again. Um, but it wasn't the movie Next. It was the movie Knowing with Nicolas Cage. And that's, and a, that's the other movie I haven't seen. I haven't seen that movie either. you got to check this out. We have to do like a Nicolas Cage like movie marathon. You know, um, and it's too bad he didn't do the Superman because that would definitely be in the marathon. Oh, but uh, <laughs> right. But uh, Knowing, um, it's basically these kids, they... Uh, they bury a time capsule, right? And it's like girl in the past. She's like, she's mm-hmm. has like a little nervous breakdown or something. She's just writing a bunch of numbers down, right? And um, and the numbers end up being like GPS coordinates and dates of big tragedies and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it's like an end of the world thing. Um, sure. You really like it. Oh, I'm sure. Well, like I talked about last show, uh, anything Nicolas Cage has, I, you know, I, I enjoy it. Yeah, I always liked uh, the treasure movies that he did. Supposedly, he's supposed to do a third one, hmm. um, but I think it's going to be more like uh, for Disney or something like that. I at least oh, that's okay. what I read. Yeah, I but know. this this topic tonight sounds real interesting. Numbers and oh uh, yeah, when he was talking to me, man, it, it, he was blowing my mind. I was like this. I was like, man, this is really weird, man. It was just odd. But uh, how's everything else going though? Uh, pretty good, man. I, like we're surviving our tour season. Um, yeah. By the time this airs, we'll be done with our uh, Halloween tours. But uh, you can yeah. always contact us. And uh, Neil and I do paranormal investigations. So if you have a uh, spooky thing going on in your home or business and are looking for paranormal paranormal guys uh, to come out. Paranormal guys of Graveside yeah. Paranormal. Right. We'll uh we'll come out and take a look at it. Um again, Neil and I, we don't charge anything, but we do document these things. So um, you know, we would put something out on YouTube. Uh we don't have to give your names. We could if you want to remain anonymous, we can make that happen. But we're really looking uh to, to get out there and uh see what you guys have in regards to um things you want us to investigate. So even if you just know of a place, uh, let us know. You can do that by sending uh, an email to neil at gravesideparanormal.com or steve at gravesideparanormal.com. Right. And like Steve was saying is uh, we don't charge anything. We really don't. I understand, you know, when we go to some of these things, people try to give us money. And I always ask them, please don't give me money. You don't understand. We like doing what we're doing and we truly like to help people. But like Steve said, there is a catch. There's a catch to everything in life, okay? And we're not going to uh, lie to anybody. If we catch any documented proof or anything like that, we like to make that uh, property of Graveside Paranormal so we can put it on our YouTube channel. That's all we're asking for. If you have major problems that we can't solve, we have people who we can uh, go in our Rolodex and we can go ahead and uh, 
we can find who we need to find to help you out a little bit further. So yeah, we do do that. Right. Businesses as well as homes. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a, we, we do a very thorough job that there's a fact. Right. But, um, uh, tour season, talking about tour season. Uh, we just did our first one last night. The group that we had last night, we had about what? 42, 44 people last night. Yep. It was a good time, man. I had a good time. There was a full moon. Um, oh, that, yeah, that, that full moon was really, really cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, the, the veil is getting thinner each and every night. Right, it's and uh, it's getting unknown. spookier and spookier um, yeah, as the and, season goes on. And it's also getting colder and colder. Right. Yeah, it's already night, dropping down to, like, here in Chicago, like, overnight 38 degrees already in October. Yeah, it's good sleeping weather, though. I enjoy the sleeping weather. It is, but, you know, getting up the next day is hard. Oh, it is. You know, like today when I woke up, man, I, I woke up, I, I had to go to my daughter's. Uh, I promised her I was going to go over there. I went over there and she made some really good chili. Let me tell you, she makes turkey chili. And uh, I didn't know that it was turkey at first. I'm like, man, this is really good, man. Mm. And then she had these uh, low, low carbohydrate uh, noodles that you really don't even know that they're low carbohydrates because you got all that chili in there. It was really good. My daughter did a really good job. I, I walked away, you know, with a nice full stomach. So I was a happy little fellow. Uh, Bears lost, but it is what it is. I don't expect too much out of this team. So, mm. but it is what it is. Well, you want to start getting into the news? Yeah, let's uh, let's do the news. Uh well, the Paranormal Guys podcast weird news. The first one that I have tonight, I'll go to myself first is a four-year-old Welsh girl who was walking along a beach with her father wound up making a rather incredible discovery when she spotted a remarkably well-preserved dinosaur print that is believed to be a whopping 220 million years old. That's a long time. According to the press release from the National Museum of Wales, the remarkable find was made the last month when Lily Wilder and her father, Richard, were visiting Bendrix Bay, which boasts something of a reputation as a hotspot for dinosaur prints. Now, let's look at this. Now, they're in Wales. So what yeah. do you think? Maybe what if it's a dragon print? What? Remember we did a story about um, Barney, the actor, <laughs> who's now a sex worker? Maybe, uh, maybe he was taking a stroll over to uh, his next client. To do that tantra thing he does, I, I don't. I don't even know how you can make this comparison. It's, it, it's a it, dinosaur it's print. When you do these things, you, you you make these comparisons of you know like Barney, which is a child's uh, thing on Channel Eleven. You know, WTV. Yeah, but we did we did a news thing uh, quite. I recently. know, I know what we did. I'm Top just of saying, mind. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> all I'm saying is. It could what be a dragon, it, right? What if yeah. it was a dragon? What let's look at it again. Right, let's look at it one more time. Now, I just want to say something about this. Is that it seems to be very well detailed. Like, you know, what if somebody actually made that mark? You know? Like, the more that, recently <laughs> than 200 years I don't know. Years. You know, it's just, it just seems very well. Like, 220 million yeah, years ago. Yeah, like that's yeah. all rock there. I mean... I don't know. I mean, I find it pretty cool. It's neat. So, yeah, it is neat. I mean, to most children, that would be something incredible. I have to say, you know, I think personally, someone did something to the ground there that caused okay. that. It doesn't, like, doesn't pass the smell test, huh? No, it doesn't pass the smell. Am I, am I, am I being mean to the fantasy of uh, people's minds, you know, believing that, you know, maybe it was a dinosaur print or something? Well, they got uh, people who could validate that, right? Like, I mean, no, I'm not, I can't say I can't say there weren't dinosaurs. There were dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. I would be a moron, a complete moron, <laughs> to say that. But it's just you know, sometimes you just go, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Eh. So, what do you got for us, Steve? <laughs> well, um, there were uh, two ladies out in uh, Limerick, Ireland, who uh, had a vision, Neil. Not a vision of love, but a vision of saint padre peel during a church service um the ladies were uh at the church service and they were um noticed a picture on the altar went aglow a blazed in light is what uh 
the words they used. Um, Nellie Cosgrave and Mary Tynan um, were at church worshiping, uh, and they saw the apparition of St. Uh, Padre Pio appear in front of them at mm. church. Now, we did, uh, we did the Amityville thing. We talked about Padre Pio right. and uh, Lorraine Warren and how she was holding the hair of uh, supposed hair when she was praying uh, Padre Pio. Not alive right. or anything like that, but she had like a piece of his hair, I guess, that they gave to people like a relic. And there was and, an uh, image that you pointed out. Yeah, and there was a thing at the Amityville house um, where you see like this image up on the um, oh antlers, antlers of this big moose, which is really weird. You know, I, a lot of people have seen a lot of weird things. I'm not going to – two people – all right, here's the thing is two people I witnessed it. Okay. Right. So two people I witnesses, you kind of have to listen. One person I witnesses, you know, it's kind of like, all right, I'm listening, but you know, I don't know if you're you're telling the truth or not. But usually, when two people, two or three people start witnessing things like this, you kind of really have to take a little bit more interest into things. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Um, I think uh, when it's a big mass sighting uh, of more than two people, because two people could, you know, say, hey, you know, uh, yeah, like Magigoria, right. Yeah, like Magigoria. I mean, but people, like, yeah, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, people would see, you know, a large sighting, uh, more people, you know, seeing a sighting, you know, something like that. You know, you you, you have to go, oh, something's there. Like you take know, the Tinley Park lights. Tinley you know? Park lights, you know, over here in Tinley Park, Illinois. Yeah, we've talked about that many times. We've had Sam on, uh -huh. uh, Sam Maranto of uh, MUFON. Yeah, uh, many people, you know, and again, it was from an Ozzy Osbourne concert, but not all of them were smoking weed no. and seeing this thing, right? Yeah, but that, that would have to be some very strong weed, man. It would probably I mean, have to be. <laughs> everybody's like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's funny because uh, my wife was out at a concert in Tinley Park recently. Was she smoking weed? No, she wasn't. She doesn't smoke weed at uh. all. Okay. But um, she went there. She went to Tears for Fears concert, right? Mm -hmm. And she was driving back home down uh, the old turnpike, you know, over by uh, Bachelors Grove, mm -hmm. you know, where there are supposed to be uh, phantom cars, right? Yep. And uh, she saw a car drive um, past her, and then it just kind of disappeared into thin air. Her friends saw it, too. And my wife is not into the paranormal at all. She's Oh, I know. I know. This is like yeah. the first time something like that has happened to her. Um, so she actually caught like, uh, or saw with her own eyes, a phantom car. That is cool. I remember when you were, uh, telling me that story and, right. uh, I, I actually just told that story to, uh, a lot of our uh, customers last night mm -hmm. about your wife. And, uh, what's odd is my mom saw a car too. And I told you a story right. it was on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. I was out there. Uh, I was bringing my mom home from mass. And it was like about 9, 10 o'clock at night, a late mass. I was coming home, and all of a sudden, my mom goes, watch out for that truck. And there right. was no truck there, but she saw that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's weird. It's just. It's, it's weird. It's, There's still, like, uh, that turnpike is very active. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a very yeah. active place. Uh, we had activity last night, as a matter of fact. Um, so let's move on to the second thing in news. Okay. All right. Second thing, or my second thing. Love was in the air at purportedly Haunted Mansion in Massachusetts last week as a tour of the spooky site accumulated with a surprise wedding proposal. Nice. According to a local media report, the romantic moment occurred at the S.K. Pierce Haunted Victorian Mansion in the city of Gardner. According to the proprietors of the mansion, the couple are actually the first to get engaged at the historic site. Though Johnson now hopes that such proposals could wind up becoming a trend, now that people know that it is allowed, it can happen. They're going to do it more often, she mused. And not just at the Pierce Manson, but at places like the Lizzie Borden Mansion. Now, I have to stop right there. Why would someone... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Or like the Monroe House. Mm-hmm. I understand, you know, people are big into the paranormal and stuff like that, but I don't know if certain locations is a good idea to start that uh, that marriage proposal thing off at. I really don't know. 
I don't mm. know if that's good karma. No, I mean, like, I, it's supposed to be, like, marriage is supposed to be, like, a sacred thing, right? Like, you're also, like, inviting a, an element of religion into it, right? A lot of, well, if you get married in the church, right, you right. probably don't want to, like, start it off at a demon-possessed uh, location. It's yeah. probably not, like, good karma. No, I, I, that, I, I teach their own, teach their own. Each, everybody does their own thing, man. You know, I, I just was watching a video of a guy who was uh, um, mimicking Stone Cold Steve Austin going into his wedding. You know, he was dressed up all in wrestling gear and this and that, and he was clanking the, the two beers together and drinking them down. He drank, like, three of them, like, really, really quick, just like Stone Cold did. Mm -hmm. You know, the, but people do – different things because everybody's a little different you know this is was the missus his new wife to be pissed off no i didn't i i didn't i didn't, I didn't see the wife it was just him coming down there and uh he was wearing an austin 316 uh t-shirt and uh it was I mean, to me it looked cool as heck okay. but you know to some people to be like oh no that that that's not proper mm. <laughs> you know it is what it is well, but it, it, once again everybody yeah. does their own thing I'm just right. saying this. I don't. I don't think the karma of doing it in certain places that are known for a certain activity would be a good idea. I'm just saying that. I don't know no, it it wouldn't be a good idea. But it kind of goes into uh, my little uh, news segment. There's a website for this, Neil. Really? Yeah, it's called um, ParanormalDate.com. Oh, you know, Paranormal Date. You are not alone. The soulmate. Soulmates interested in the strange can join for free now. And so basically you go to this website and you tell them um, which country you're in. And then uh, you fill out a form and uh, they give you access. And supposedly once you're on, uh -huh. they will um, match you up with somebody who's interested in the same paranormal stuff you are. So if you're in the ghost you can go and find the ghost ladies, the ghost gals and guys. If you're into Bigfoot, you know, you can find that. You're into UFOs. They got a section for that. So it's a place where uh, weird can meet the weird. And I don't like calling it weird, but I, I don't treat weird as like a negative thing, right? Like we're into weird stuff. I admit oh, that. We, we're, we are definitely uh, out there a little bit. Yeah, I, so I mean. To some people, I, I know some people sometimes when we talk and this and that, they go, yeah, okay. No, I don't think so. no but like if you're into this stuff it, it, a lot, right, it might be nice to have somebody who who also is so you can kind of like share it with them. What happens, uh, if, what happens if they're into like uh, incubus and succubus? See, that's, that's, that's the kind of people that would get engaged at like a haunted place, you know? Like, no. you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, there's probably going to be a section for that on paranormal date. That's but. what I'm wondering. You know, it's like <laughs> there's a there's a second a succubus and an incubus section. I think it's good for people who are into paranormal to uh, be in a relationship with somebody who's not into the paranormal, and the reason is it keeps me it keeps me for one grounded, right? So like uh, I don't go strolling off into the world of weird too far i've got like uh an anchor in reality with my wife mm -hmm. um but then she'll see something like a a car vanishing in front of her and uh everything <laughs> just changed yeah she'll, she'll say it's my fault because like i brought that i brought that on because like i drive you. i drive the same car to all these places where we investigate right right so now all this weird stuff's happening because the car <laughs> oh yeah so, it, yeah it has that yeah. uh connection there's an attachment in the vehicle yeah it's like the new uh christine yeah yeah all right i think uh we're pretty good with the news though okay we are <laughs> now <laughs> are we do we yeah, have one oh, hold on no, oh, we, no, we have one more we have one I more do. hold on yeah That's i got all right so just so everybody knows i try to give any like reviews of any little movies that are like uh horror oriented or anything weird now i watched on netflix um the new monsters movie uh, I actually enjoyed it. I, I, you know, some people didn't like it. I didn't expect it to really go to the movie theaters because I saw the trailer for it. And I, when I saw the trailer, I go, oh no, this is going like to a, like a Netflix or an Amazon, like really quick. And when I first heard the news that Rob Zombie was making a movie called the monsters, mm -hmm. I really anticipated 
that it wasn't going to be uh, the movie that it was. I expected it to be like dark, you know, because I mean? he had the movies like A House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he's known for that, The Devil's Rejects, all those movies. And then all of a sudden he does this. And don't get me wrong, I actually enjoyed the movie. Like, it's more like a really nice little movie that you you just kind of want to look at because you liked Herman Munster, you know, and you liked Lily and all the rest of the group. You liked Grandpa. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was. Uh, to be honest with you, I liked the movie. So I give it a thumbs up for it See, just because, you know, retro. That's a couple that would meet on Paranormal Date, right? And uh, and propose at a haunted location. So it's all yeah. tied together. And that's what kind of actually the Monsters movie is about. It's it's their origin story of how. Oh they yeah, are. yeah. Oh, it, wow. it, so it does kind of go with what we're talking about tonight a little bit. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. So it's weird. Was, how was there swiping involved? Like swipe right, swipe left. They have like an app. Like kids these days, they meet on. They don't meet in person, dude. They they have an app. They go and they they sign up on a website to meet people. Um, is that See, how they I, met? Whatever happened to just, you know, you meet somebody, you, you just, you get a little nervous, but you know what, you, you get strong enough and you say, Hey, can you, would you like to go get some ice cream? Would, would you, you like, like to go to a movie? Would you like to go to a haunted house? And would you like to go to an exorcism? Would you like to go find Bigfoot tonight? <laughs> no. Well, that would be slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you know why they call him Bigfoot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna be done with the news. Uh, upcoming next, we are gonna be talking with uh, Doug Rodriguez, and we're gonna be talking about Gematria. But first, a couple messages from yours truly at Graveside Paranormal and the Paranormal Guys Podcast. Boo. Hey, boils and ghouls, it's spooky season again, and Graveside Paranormal is ready to give you the best tours that we can give you. Come on out this year, starting on October 8th, and we have a special tour coming out. Other than our nightlife tour, we have the Monks Tour, which will be on the 22nd, the 28th, and 29th for the first time ever. Monks Gates is going to be opened up for us, and we're going to be able to go in there and tell you all the wonderful, scary stories. So come on out if you want to have a good time and get a little spooky. Boom. And now. Back to the Paranormal Guys podcast. All right, we're back. Tonight, we have a special guest with us, Steve. Yes. Yes. We are going to talk about a subject called Jumatria with Mr. Doug Rodriguez. Uh, he's going to come in here. He's going to explain it to us. Uh, it's going to be the correlation of, I believe, numbers and also some conspiracy theories that he's going uh, to talk with us tonight. I like I think that. It's going to be really, really cool, dude. What do you think? Awesome. I'm always up for a good conspiracy theory. I know you are. I, I said to myself, I go, Steve is going to love this guy. He's going to he's going to be like, this is my guy. This is a guy I got to talk to in the future. Mm -hmm. I think you guys got a lot in common uh, when it comes to conspiracy theories like uh, MK Ultra and stuff like that. And I oh, think yeah. what he's going to be talking about tonight is right up your alley. And I hope up a lot of other people's alley tonight. So let me welcome in right now, Mr. Doug Rodriguez. Hey, hey Doug. Doug. Hey, guys. Oh, I'm great. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having oh, me. I'm doing great. I can't yeah. complain. I can't Pretty complain. Pretty good. All right. Now, Doug, you're going to be talking to us about Gematria. How did you get into Gematria? And tell us what Gematria is. Okay. So real quick, uh, I first heard about it in 2018. I was watching a podcast called Tinfoil Hat with mm -hmm. Sam Ripley. Uh, it's a great podcast. I recommend it. It's funny and uh, a lot of good information. But this guy named Zachary Hubbard came on and he was talking about Gematria, which is a uh, numerical, a system of assigning numerical value to a word or phrase in the belief that words or phrases with identical numerical values bear some relation to each other. So basically, it's like uh, code breaking. It's uh, taking uh, letters and turning them into numbers. And then when you add those words up with the numbers, you start to see they equal certain things that are connected to each other. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And um, go ahead. So it's basically like, you know, events in history that they say are uh, usually involving death, that they say are random natural events. But with Gematria, we can see that uh, is most likely not the case. So uh, that's what this is. Basically, it's like, is this all a coincidence? And what are the odds if it was? And if it's not a coincidence, then this is happening on purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, you know, it's 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 code breaking events in the news and seeing that, hey, maybe this didn't just randomly happen. Maybe this was pre-planned. 
<laughs> so it's like a correlation of the numbers that help relate into possible conspiracy theories of people's deaths. Right, that they didn't happen, you know, naturally or the way they said that, well, if, if it was pre-planned like that, then, you know, we're talking murder. We're talking murdering by the numbers. Murder? Wow. That, that's a way, that should be a, a bestseller book, Murdering by the Numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Zachary Hubbard does have a couple of books out there. Uh, one's called Number Games. I recommend it. It's very good. And uh, very, very, it's pretty mind blowing stuff, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I know that you sent Steve an email on the, uh, the page for Gematria. So let's get a little bit of a breakdown before we get into certain subject matter of yeah. um, what you want to talk about tonight. Uh, Steve, you want to pull up that Gematria? Sure. Let me um, pull that up real quick here. So this is this is a website that's called Gematria. Right. Please spell that for our uh, listeners. Uh, G E M A T R I A. And basically what this is, this is a, a calculator. So you can write all this out by hand and I'm going to explain the ciphers and you can do this by hand. But with these calculators, uh, they have apps now you can do Gematria on. It just saves you a ton of time. Um, so basically there's four main ciphers that we're going to use. Uh, you want to click on the left one there. Yeah. And uh, you can see how there's uh, four zeros right on the screen. Right. So the left one says ordinal. So basically this cipher, think alphabetical. It's very simple. One through Z equals A through, I'm sorry, A through Z equals one through 26. So basically each letter becomes a number. A is one, B is two, C is three, all the way to Z is 26. Okay. Right. So then uh, the next one over is green. It says reverse. Not the next one, uh, but the, the third one there says reverse. Right. So that's reverse alphabetical. So now Z is one, Y is two, X is three, and A becomes 26. So it's one cipher, but it's forward and reverse. Okay. Are you with me? So then go back to the uh, the second one there. It says reduction. Right. That's that's basically uh, called Pythagorean. And basically what that is, is like uh, alphabetical A through, you know, A is one, B is two, C is three. But when you get to J, the 10th letter, there's no um, double digit numbers in this cipher. So 10, you add it to itself. 10 is one plus zero is one. K, the 11th letter, becomes 1 plus 1 is 2, and so on. Got so it. Then, so then Z so, would be 8. Yeah, right. so that's basically 1 through 9, 1 through 9, 1 through 8. And then uh, the last one there is reverse reduction, which is mm -hmm. that same cipher in reverse. So that is weird. Forward and reverse. Okay. So then J, reverse uh, reduction, would be 8. Okay, got it. Yeah. So now you have, like, any word you type in, you're going to have four totals. And now you're going to see how these numbers start matching up. Well, I got a couple examples I can give you if you don't mind. Sure. So why don't we start with, uh, can you type in the word Catholic, please? Catholic? Yes. Do you see how it equals 35 and 46? Yes. So JFK was the first ever Catholic president. He was the 35th president, and he was killed at age 46. Oh. See what I'm 46 talking? is... Uh is uh biden and he's like the next biden, catholic. Yes. biden is the second catholic president and he's the 46th president so these are okay so somebody could be like oh this is a coincidence but when these keep going and they okay. keep backing up and stacking up on each other well what are we talking about um if you don't mind can you type the crocodile hunter the crocodile hunter yes Sorry, I hate to put you to work like this, man. No, it's okay. <laughs> That's what he's here for, man. I'll make this quick. You see how it equals 94? Reverse reduction? Yeah. Okay. Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, right? Yeah. He died on September 4th. That's 9-4. Interesting. So, and these, this just keeps going and going and going. So, um... You could type in, uh, I'll make this quick. Let's do the last one. You know, DMX, can you type in Dark Man X? DMX dark. is short for Dark Man X. Okay. okay. It, it equals 49. Yeah. He died on April 9th, 49. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And then, oh, this is a great one. You, are you guys familiar with the band Slipknot? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they have a song called Gematria, the killing name. 
Um, oh. Their bass player died. Can you type Paul Gray, please? Paul, and then how do you spell his last name? G-R-A-Y? I think it's A-Y. Yeah, yeah A-Y. A-Y. Uh, do you see how it equals 38? Reduction? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So in Gematria, uh, murder equals 38, death equals 38, to kill equals 38, R-I-P equals 38. All these things equal 38. They wrote a song called Gematria, the killing name. Paul Gray's name equals 38. He died when he was 38 years old. Weird. Yeah. What a coincidence. Wow. That is weird, man. Right. And then the last one I'll do, and then we can get into, you know, the main topics I want to talk about. The last example is uh, the police have a song called Murder by Numbers, and it came out in 1983. Yeah. And it's about killing people to numbers. And when you kill enough people, you join the ranks of the elite and all this stuff. It's a really kind of dark song. Uh, can you write out murder, please? It equals okay. 83. And right. Uh, that song came out in 1983, Murder by Numbers. Interesting. So just some quick examples. And by the way, I mean, just the examples I have alone could be the whole show. But I wanted to move on. You know. I just want to see what Neil Gibbons does. Yeah, type in Neil Gibbons. Yeah. Um, so 62. And I know 62, dude. Man, it doesn't, is it always about death? Uh, Jumatra? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Oh, well, so I, I don't, don't maybe we, you know, you shouldn't look at this. <laughs> Some people actually use it to gam, uh, gamble and predict like sports and stuff like that. I don't do that. Uh, it's not, I don't, I don't like to use it for that, but that's just me. Uh, Looks like I'm going to live to 83. <laughs> Neil, I will visit you um, for, the first, for the first 10 years. Yeah. And then, uh, then I'll be 72. Well, um, I got about, I got about. Ten and a half years left, so I better get some stuff done. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> right, right at retirement. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to joke around because this is like uh, it's crazy. But like, there's a lot of Neil Gibbons, and they're not all going to die at 62, right? I hope not. So, be, now, now, hold on a second. Now, now listen to this one, uh, Rod, uh, Doug. Is you imagine if all the Neil Gibbons in the world? They all die <laughs> at 62 years of age. Now that, that would be something odd. Yeah, that would be something to, to talk about. <laughs> now, now, Doug, you're going to give us three examples tonight or today yes. of uh, Gematria. What's going to be your first one? Okay, so the first one uh, that really uh, grabbed my attention, and I noticed that, man, this is just too much uh, coincidental stuff going on, was the death of Kobe Bryant. So basically... Um, uh, he, he died January 26th. I was at work. I remember hearing about it in the morning and I just immediately was like, I mean, this is crazy, but I was like, the Lakers are going to win the finals. I, I, it was the first thought that popped in my head. I'm not a prediction guy, but it just, it just seemed obvious to me. But I also knew when I get out of work, I'm going to go on the computer. I'm going to look online. There's going to be a lot of weird stuff involving his death. And of course I was right. Uh, first of all, uh, the day before he died, LeBron James, who was on the Lakers, was in Philadelphia, Kobe's hometown, and he passes Kobe in all-time scoring, dropping Kobe to fourth place in all-time NBA scoring. And Kobe was there as well. If you think about it, the Lakers only play the uh, Philadelphia 76ers one time in the year. And it was that one game, because they're in two different conferences, that one time of the year it just so happened that LeBron was going to pass Kobe, and Kobe was there. And then the next day, Kobe died. Um, and then there was also some weird stuff. Uh, Steve, you don't mind pulling up some of the images I sent you about Kobe? Yeah. So um, there was a Comedy Central drawing. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Um, so basically, that's Kobe Bryant uh, crashing in a helicopter. And uh, we all know he died in a helicopter crash for real. But in this cartoon that came out on November 16th, uh, or you could say the 16th of November, like the King James Bible came out in 1611, and LeBron James is nicknamed uh, King James, who passed him the night before in scoring. So anyways, in this cartoon, he crashes. They're like, Kobe, uh, we'll help you out of there. Just give us your trophy. And then he's like, he won't do it. And then that helicopter explodes. So I mm. thought that was a little strange. So this, but this picture here is way before he died. Yeah, this was in 2016. And what and was he died in, 
18? She died 20, 2020. Oh, 2020. Okay. Yep. You wow. know, it's so weird because, you know, like you have things like this, Doug, you know, like mm -hmm. take, for instance, like the Simpsons and stuff like that, that they do the cartoons, right. like the Donald Trump thing. That's so yeah. weird when these things or the happen. 9-11 stuff, they're constantly, it's like predictive programming, they yeah. call it, where they're like dropping truths before they happen. It's pretty wild. Isn't it that is. like an occult ritual where they tell you what they're going to do before they do it because it's like lesser magic or something? Yeah. Uh, they, and it's like they have to tell on themselves in order to, it's like a, a karma, a magic thing. Yeah, you're okay. correct. Wow. And then they do it right in front of everybody and nobody realizes it or pays attention. And they're like, oh, we told you we we're going to do it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It's right here. Why? It's right here. Why didn't you notice? <laughs> that is weird. It's like, it's like Nostradamus, man. Yeah. And then you get into, um, I, you know, this, uh, the Black okay, Mamba. So yeah, he did this movie for Nike. It's like a five-minute movie where he's talking about uh, Robert Rodriguez is interviewing him. He's like, oh, we should make a movie about you. And while they're talking about it, they're showing scenes of a movie. And first of all, in that poster, you could see the helicopter that's to his right shoulder. Right. You notice there's kind of like flames and stuff coming from it. Mm -hmm. So at the end of that movie, Kanye West is a villain and Kobe's on uh, the roof of a building. Kanye's flying away in a helicopter. And Kobe has a basketball that turns into a bomb. He throws it at Kanye's helicopter, and that uh, helicopter explodes. So, so in the movie, Kanye helicopter. Kanye exploded in the helicopter in the movie. Correct, yeah. That Kobe caused him to explode, yeah. So you have the cartoon with an exploding helicopter, and you have this movie with an exploding helicopter. Huh. That huh. is weird. Yeah. Definitely wow. weird. And, uh, I sent you a couple other images, I believe. So that's the Black Mamba logo. His a nickname and his brand basically was Black Mamba. And if you look at it, it could be a stretch, but it looks like you're looking at a helicopter from the top. Mm -hmm. See how it's long in the middle and it's like the, the, the blades go out? I yeah. don't see that. Just yeah. so, uh, just so uh, our, our viewers and listeners listen to, uh, you can catch this on our YouTube channel. Uh, I believe also on Spotify, we have the video now. So right. if you want to catch it also on Spotify, you can get it on there instead of listen to your podcast. So if you want to flip back and forth so you can see what uh, Doug is talking about, feel free at any time. <laughs> so like that image alone, I, I could see, okay, yeah, that's a stretch here. That's a coincidence. But mm -hmm. now you're stacking up all these things that are like helicopters involving Kobe Bryant who would end up dying in a helicopter. <laughs> and then there you have Kobe Bryant himself as a helicopter. Remote control. Like the Lakers. Yeah, you could fly him around. Right. Now, 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 now I just have to play a little, a little devil's advocate on this. Please do. Please do. Now, I understand what you're saying. You know, you got the helicopter and this and that. But how many other basketball players were probably designed like that? You know, was there oh, like a yeah, there's, Jordan or Kobe, you know? There's a, there's a bunch, I'm pretty sure. When did this yeah. toy come out? I I don't even know. Yeah, not know. not after, right? Because that'd be oh, no, wrong. no, 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 no. Yeah, okay. right, right. No, this is um, yeah, all before. So he's he's being controlled. Or the whole thing's being controlled, right? The symbolism of the remote control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I have to say on that one, Doug. I have to just say coincidence on that one. I have to. Sure. Me personally, yeah, because you have uh, probably a designer came. You see, like a lot of designers, they come to or toy factories, they come to people and they go, "All right, we're going to do this for you know this toy and this and that." Uh, can you yeah. give us ten players? You know, like take for instance uh, WWE or something like that. They'll come up with new ideas for the wrestlers and this and that. You know, it'll be a whole. No, right, right. Yeah, no. I mean, that's what I mean. It's 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 an open to interpretation, really. I mean, right. it's a coincidence. My my whole point is that as these things keep stacking up, it's like. What are the odds? All this helicopter stuff, specifically right. involving uh, Kobe. You know. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I get it. I just every now and then, just so you know, Doug, if I see something, I cannot help myself. Oh uh, okay? yeah, please. I, I have to give yeah. my I have to give my two cents on things. We've got to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I think the last image was just basically another toy helicopter um, that was uh, yeah. Kobe. I don't think we have that one. Um, okay. On here, well, it was yeah. an, an actual helicopter that they titled Kobe Bryant helicopter. So we had two toy helicopters. Again, how many NBA players have that? I don't know. Well, wow. in that aspect, but uh, if you don't mind going back to the uh, gematria calculator, sure. Because so so, anyways, I find all this weird stuff, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of helicopters involving this guy who dies in a helicopter. Um, then I decided to check. The Gematria. Uh, if you could type in Kobe Bryant, please. 
That's K O B E B R Y A N T. Yes. yes. Okay. So you see in the first uh, cipher, it equals 113. Yeah. So I'm going to get into uh, Kobe and how many things equal 113 in relation to his life. So basically, I don't want you to type all this stuff. It's too much. But I think people have enough of an idea to how these numbers, you know, using the cipher, that it would add up to what I'm saying. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Kobe Bryant equals 113. He became a professional basketball player equals 113. Uh, and the NBA, the National Basketball Association equals 113. And, I mean, it's no secret he emulated his game after Michael Jordan. Um, Michael Jordan equals 113. And then don't forget that he was originally drafted, Kobe, by the Charlotte Hornets, which is like a two-hour drive away from where Jordan played college. So there's some Jordan-Kobe connections going on here. Uh, Kobe's first name equals 33. Michael equals 33. Kobe wore 33 in high school, and Jordan won six championships with uh, Scottie Pippen, who wore 33. Now, I know that one, you know, a lot of people wear a 33 jersey. That's fine. But their first names, their full names and their first names equal the same thing. And then their last names. Bryant equals 26. Jordan equals 26. Kobe dies on the 26th of January. When Kobe passed up Michael Jordan in all-time scoring, he did it by scoring 26 points. That game was on December uh, 14th, 2014, and that was a span of 113 days after Kobe Bryant's August 23rd birthday. And now, when I say like, yeah, go ahead. Now, so would you think that there's probably a relationship between people and numbers, how they meet each other then? Like it's predestined? Perhaps, you know, because... Uh, the person I learned this from, uh, Zachary Hubbard, he's convinced that the Jesuits are behind all this. And he, he I could see why he thinks that because their, their numbers come up in literally all these events where death is involved. So I see that conclusion. However, I feel like there's some kind of supernatural element here where, like you say, like destiny or uh, things are just like, like uh, you know, it, it's too much to be just men doing this. You know, what's, what's interesting, um, you've heard of, uh, like simulation theory, right? Where that's yeah, yeah. reality is a computer program, and we're just right. in it. That's um, what this makes me think of. Yeah, right. That is interesting. Um, also, AI is advanced enough right now, um, and our computing power is advanced enough now to probably start making connections between um, people, names, and you know events. Yeah. You know, to just like, you know, have a computer be scanning and creating um, codes like this mm -hmm. and then uh, linking stuff together, like all the 113s together. And yeah. kind, of like, kind of like a dating system. I mean, I like to think <laughs> of uh, simulation theory not so much on the terms of a computer, uh, uh -huh. but as like uh, if God created the world with letters and numbers, mm -hmm. then it's a simulate. It's like it's God's creation. So the math is happening. Uh through God, supernaturally, right. you know, like some sort of supernatural um, computation type of yeah. thing. We use computers, yeah. and maybe there's something far beyond what we know that computes. In I, I don't know, but <laughs> there does seem yeah, to be I, a rhyme and reason to things, and I, I absolutely, I agree. There does yeah. seem to be glitches in in reality sometimes, right? That make us think, yeah. "Oh, yeah, this looks like a <laughs> could be a computer <laughs> program." Yeah. For sure. So anyways, uh, getting back to it, Kobe's last career game he played was against the Utah Jazz. Utah Jazz equals 113. That's also, if you recall, the last team Michael Jordan won the finals against. Um, and I'm saying all this stuff about 113. Kobe Bryant was drafted from high school in the first round with the 13th pick, 113. And then he makes his NBA debut on November 3rd, which is 11-3, 113. <laughs> that, that is, you know what that is that is very weird i mean yeah it's like like i said that number was predestined for him that's his that's thing crazy. that's like a signature throughout life yeah and the good thing too is like any anybody could just go google this like everything i'm talking about you have the you have the ciphers here you have you know the, the internet your disposable or disposal anything i'm saying anyone can go to just check for themselves so i think i think that's important you know right right what you got next for us doug Okay, so if you also see uh, Kobe Bryant, um, 
Is it still on the screen? I'm sorry, I can't see. Oh, I can put it back up there. Um, yeah, just real quick, one last yeah. time. Here you go. So, so Kobe go. Bryant equals 41. And this is where it, to me, this is where it really gets uh, interesting. So Kobe Bryant equals 41. He was 41 years old when he died. His initials KB equal 41. He spends his entire, uh, his entire career in LA, LA equals 41. Now, when the original event happened, the crash, they first reported the uh, takeoff time of the helicopter, but they mm -hmm. didn't report the accident time. They reported the time the first emergency call was placed. And then, so the takeoff time was 9.06 a.m. And that call was placed at 9.47 a.m. That's 41 minutes. And also the pilot, his name, Ara Zob Zobayan, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, his name equals 41. Hmm. And then, yeah, and then when Kobe Bryant, he scored a career high 81 points, the rest of the team scored 41 points. And in Kobe's last game, uh, he scored 60. The rest of the team scored 41 points. And in that same game, the last shot he ever takes and makes, he's guarded by Trey Lyles, who's wearing the 41 jersey. And that same game, he walks off the court for the last time ever with 4.1 seconds on the clock. Now, that is freaking weird, man. How could, how could simple people do that? You know what I mean? That That's some, like... That's supernatural stuff. Well, you know, it's 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 things like yourself that you pay attention to that. Whereas the common person who's going to any sporting thing or just life in general yeah. isn't. And maybe there is, like Steve said, that there's something behind everything, like a matrix that's pushing all the levers. You know, that certain things happen when they happen. You know, I to don't be know. fair, I think that um, there's this is there's like number rituals going on so when zachary hubbard's talking about the jesuits uh mm -hmm. being responsible for this i think it might be a combination of reality itself and maybe people like a forced reality right yeah like like able to pull some kind of strings to to manipulate reality i don't know we don't know how this happens but we know by the numbers it's happening you know so sometimes when things happen um those events weren't just natural events that they were there's some kind of conspiracy behind it yeah and that's Pretty been crazy. controlled by a uh sort of like an elite or a like cult type of they call it the cabal the cabal right yeah they, yeah you know what i do have a question um doug mm. so i'm looking at this thing kobe bryant and i'm looking underneath the numbers and mm -hmm. steve has it typed in and it says kobe 11 15 2 and 5 and then yeah. the number 33 does show up in between. So that so what that's doing is it's typing is it's telling you the total of his first name. Yeah. So Kobe equals 33. And in that in that same cipher, uh Bryant equals, I believe, 80. Oh, I wow. Got it, got yeah, it. So it's pretty crazy. Uh um, oh, you can actually move stuff around on this site. Okay. I'll move it back. <laughs> yeah, that's that interesting. That's weird. So so that same day that Kobe died was the uh, the Grammys were held. This was a Sunday, and they happened to be held at the Staples Center. That's where Kobe spent his entire career, right? And the host was Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys equals 41. Mm. And then for the first time ever since 1981, uh, Billie Eilish won the four major awards. She won Best Album, Best Record, Best Song, Best New Artist. She won the four major awards for the first time since 81. Kobe's career high is 81 points. And also think of Kobe getting dropped to fourth place and scoring the night before. And then Billie Eilish, her first name, B-I-L-L-I-E, equals 113 and 41. Pull it up, Steve. Sorry. Billie. 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 Is it I-E? I yeah, think it's I-E, I -E. yeah. Yeah. I, and then Eyelash? I no, just her first name. Just her first name. Oh, okay. Is that how you spell it? Yeah, B I L L I E equals one thirteen and forty one. Yeah. Huh. Weird. So then I'll that close with this number. Yeah. I'll close with this number by talking about so they the Lakers that season they made it to the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to it's a best of seven series. They win their first three series, four to one, four to one, four to one, right? I'm like okay, very subtle. So now they're in the finals, the championship round. They're against the Miami Heat. They're up three games to one. So I'm like, they're going to win game five to make it four to one, you know. But no, they end up losing, and they win the next game, game six, on October 11th. 
meaning they won the series four to two. Uh, first of all, LeBron James, from his December 30th birthday to the championship winning date, October 11th, is exactly 41 weeks. And second of all, uh, LeBron James and Jamatri equals 42. They won the series four games to two. And that date was October 11th. If you write it out, 10, 11 equals 42. So the Lakers win the series four to two, meaning the Heat lost the series two to four. This happened during the time of Libra equals 42 and 24, right? So the uh, Heat loses the finals two to four, like Kobe wore the jersey number 24. The Lakers won that game 106 to 93. That's by 13 points. His daughter was 13 when she died. And then uh, just know that October 11th, the day they won, it fell on the second Sunday in October, which is always celebrated as National Father-Daughter Day. Weird. Hmm. Someone call that it a coincidence. Weird. I would disagree. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. So, you, that, yeah, that's so interesting because, I, I, you know, hindsight, everything's twenty twenty, right? Like, um, yeah. after an event happens and you start plugging stuff in and looking at it, and you can make all those connections. Um, is anybody using this to predict with accuracy um, before things happen and say, like, a, is there anybody out there with a high rate of success predicting things with this? And again, that yeah. might not be possible if it's all being orchestrated, or maybe we can get some insight into what maybe, you know, for example, what the cabal is up to. Right. So, yeah, I mean, if you know the ciphers well enough, and I'll, I'll again point to Zachary Hubbard, he has predicted not only sporting events, but certain celebrities' deaths and, and what day it should fall on because of what their birthday is and all that stuff. So people do use it to predict this stuff. I'm not at that level. I'm just kind of like, uh, you so know. So people can, see, people can use this to make some money. People do use it to make money, yeah. So, so where is this individual so I can go meet this individual? <laughs> You uh, hey, right I'll do whatever this individual wants. Rub his feet. Do whatever you need, man. I, Neil, I, all you have to do is create a neural network uh, computer program to link everything, yeah. and then I believe his website is uh, Gematria Effect News. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put that to the side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Remind me. Hopefully. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're good to do some uh, research. It's like having it's That's like having it is, the yeah, uh, sports research. almanac from Back to the Future, right? You and I got like a bunch yeah. of bling 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 on the next uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you got for us next, Doug? Okay, so I just want to talk about his uh, daughter for a second. Okay, and if you could type in uh, Gianna Bryant, it's a okay. G I G I A N N A. And then Bryant. Okay. You see how her name equals 126? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the day that they died on January 26th. Oh, Lord. oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. And go back to the pilot. His initials were A Z. A like one, Z like twenty-six. Oh yeah. And, and this is this is weird. So they were in a Sikorsky helicopter. That was invented by a guy named Igor Ivanovich Sikorsky. His name equals one twenty six. And that dude died on October twenty sixth. If you drop the zero because it has no value, it equals 126. So the helic, the guy who invents the helicopter, his right. death date, the girl in the uh, helicopter, the pilot, all these things are signaling that date of January 26, 126. You know, oh. I saw I saw for a second there, Steve, that you're going to try to type in Igor's full name. <laughs> then you said that. Nah. <laughs> Good luck. I got it written down, and it's yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> but I guarantee you, if you do, it's, it equals 126. So anyways, that day, uh, Atlanta Hawks, uh, the basketball team, uh, Atlanta Hawks, their guard, Trey Young, he goes on Twitter and he says that Gianna Bryant uh, told him he was her favorite player. And I remember a bunch of people being confused, like, what? They never heard that before. But anyways, he goes on and says, she, she said I was her favorite player, so I dedicate this game to her. A couple things here. Trey Young equals 126. And he, his name also equals 45. That game he scores 45 points with 14 assists. And then if you write out 45, it equals 126 and 54. Like Gianna Bryant equals 126 and 54. And then he played on the Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks equals 32. Like Kobe's jerseys added together, 8 plus 24 is 32. And if that's a stretch, Kobe Bryant himself, he was in a, a, an Adidas basketball camp in high school before he got drafted. He was player 143. 
So you can look this up. He decided to add one plus four plus three to make the number eight so that he could uh, wear that in the NBA. And then this guy, uh, Kevin Neely, I don't know if he's a sportscaster or something, but he goes on Twitter that day and he posts that the last player to drop a 45 point double double with under 25 field goal attempts against Jordan, Jordan's old team, the Wizards, another Jordan connection, was I'm sure you can guess Kobe Bryant. So Trey Young, Trey Young does it the day they die, and the last player to do it was Kobe against that team. And by the way, Trey Young scored 45 points on 13 of 24 shooting, just like she was 13. He wore the number 24, and he shot 81% from the free throw line, and his career high in points is 81. Wow, man, oh, there's so much crazy shit. stuff. I mean, I'm wondering about 45, so I was like uh, putting in, like, because we talked about uh, the 46 president is like 45 and just seeing what came up with uh, Donald Trump, right? Because he was 45. Yeah. Um, I don't see anything. <laughs> 45. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, 45 is a crazy number. <laughs> All right. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you have, uh, we have Kobe Bryant and his daughter. And there's yeah. major correlations, and, and the way that you're 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 t- telling me this, I think maybe there's a universal thing where people. Me- this is just me saying this again. I know I said this first time. Maybe yeah. there's a universal thing where like numbers help relate people's relationships with each other. I don't know. It just it just sounds like that kind of to me. And you know what? To me, it's like um, we're never going to know. You know, you no matter what happens, we're never going to know exactly what's causing this or how this is happening. But to me, it's just dude, like GI Joe said, knowing is half the battle. Like, it's right. not for me. <laughs> so like, like this is happening for real, you know? So how mm-hmm. the hows and whys is like, it's beyond us, but it is happening. Well, yeah. So what's the, who's the next person you got for us, Doug? Okay. So I just wanted to close on one little thing. Uh, Cause they have a weird connection to Japan. Uh, believe it or not, Kobe and Gianna. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Kobe Bryant's parents have gone on record to say that they named him after the beef in Kobe, Japan. And Kobe, Japan was established in 1889 on April 1st, like 4-1, right? So then on May 1st, 2019, which is Gianna's birthday, and sadly it was her last ever birthday, uh, on May 1st, Japan uh, Emperor Naruhito became the 126th Emperor of Japan. And from that May 1st date, to their crash date, 126.20, was exactly 271 days, and 271 is the 58th prime number. Kobe Bryant equals 50, uh, 58. The pilot, again, Arzabayan equals 58. And just look at that number, 5 plus 8 equals 13. Her death age, break it down one more time, 1 plus 3 equals 4. Remember, he fell to 4th the day before they died. And the word in Japanese for the number 4 and the word for death is exactly the same. It's she, S-H-I, which equals 45, Steve. Like the amount of points that were dedicated to her that Trey Young scored. Huh. Why Japan is involved, I don't know, but uh, I thought that was pretty I'll, I'll pretty tell you. I'll tell you what, Doug, you are very well knowledge in this. I mean, you go like that, man. You're like. <laughs> well, I had, I, you know, I have notes. <laughs> but I have nothing to do. Putting it all together, putting it all together, it's like when you, when you, when you finally get it, you know, it becomes easier. It just clicks in. Yeah, for sure. The puzzle. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break for a second, and we are going to do our segment, which we call Into the Shadows with Shell. Attention all lost souls. It's time to get into the shadows with Shell. Find the Key by Shell Ward. One of the tools we've been gifted with is yet to be explored. Numbers travel through space and time and even shore to shore. We all know that words and language have carried power through the years, from a babe's first attempt or even harsh words spoken through tears. 
our words are made of letters, but we don't know the energy or the powers that lie behind each one. Some may think it's anarchy. Certain words and phrases hide meanings when the numbers are constructed. The effect is a phenomenon that can even leave a country erupted. Entwined in a shawl during a ceremony or found in the days of the week, even the alphabet can be used as a cipher if it's enlightenment you seek. Repeating numbers are universal patterns that are speaking from the spirit to comfort during weakness or guide us from evil and teach us to fear it. Find the code and you'll find the key to unlock and solve the world's greatest mystery. And now, back to the Paranormal Guys podcast. All right. That was our Michelle with Shadows with Shell. Into the Shadows. Into the Shadows with Shell. Thank Michelle. you, Steve. All right. Yeah. So we're back. We're back with uh, Doug. We're going to continue to talk about Gematria. Uh, you have another person in mind for us, Doug. Who is that? Uh, I do, in fact. Um, just recently, in August, a actress by the name of Anne Heche uh, passed away. Right. And I think I sent you guys the video yeah. um, of her. So basically, she was in a car crash on August 5th, like 8-5, or you could say the 5th of August, like 5-8. And she's in this car crash, and uh, there's a video of them wheeling her out you know, to the ambulance. And it's, it's strange. And then by knowing Gematria, something stood out to me right away. So here we are. Go ahead. Take us through this. So, yeah, they're wheeling her. And to me, it looks like a body bag. And she was very much alive. And because uh, she didn't die until a week later. And here they're moving her past all the uh, emergency vehicles. Uh, so and each one of those vehicles is numbered. And, you know, they're, they're all connected to her. Uh, name or date and here she's they're, they're about to put her in the ambulance e43 oh yeah that's that's one that comes and up 63 i think is that one down below right yeah they're about to put her in ambulance 63 and that's what stood out to me right away i knew something was going on so she's going into 63 yes oh wait is that her getting up yeah, yeah. that's her getting up and I don't know what she's trying to get away. I don't know. Right before they put her in. Right to before 63. they put her in ambulance 63, yeah. What the? It's pretty, it's pretty Wait, creepy. she unzips herself? So that's, dude, that's like, that's a body bag. That's a body bag. No, and that's a zipper. There, clearly, yeah. Hold on, pull that what's, back what's again. What's going on there? Steve? Wait. Let's see that one more time, dude. All right, so. So obviously they... this kind of, you know, stood out to me. As it's hidden. Wait, here. okay, so that's her getting up. But like right before yeah. that, doesn't she like, like how does she get her out of the body bag? Just she's like putting her hands in the middle of there yeah. and opening it. And she's it. like yeah, slipping she through. It. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got like a little hole and she's able to unzip it, right? Yeah. Yeah. There she also goes. notice they said she had severe burns and she was in there for like 40 minutes burning. I mean, she doesn't, she's got some, some debris on her a little bit, but it. You know, one thing I like to point video. out is, you know, one thing I'd like to point out is, yeah, she's going into an ambulance, but are those paramedics or are those firemen putting them in, putting her in there? Fire department, firemen, LAFD. Yeah. See, why wouldn't yeah. paramedics uh, be putting her in there? I don't even see paramedics anywhere. Maybe it's me. I mean, I just kind of noticed that. Yeah, that's true. Because that's a I, as well. just so so that people know that uh, me and Doug work in professional fields um, and we've seen things like this and uh that's such a creepy video you would have paramedics is she wearing is a dress like it's like they're good almost catch. pushing her in good catch neil i didn't even uh notice that that is weird man yeah yeah so anyways I, they're wheeling her in ambulance 63 and i'm watching that going come on so i so i know that uh demonic equals 63 that's a very creepy video What's this? Six, is that sixty nine, on uh, on that truck? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I think I'm just like 
That just reminds yeah. me of like uh, yin yang. I don't know, but six nine. I don't know what it means, but um, no, yeah, there's some to that. Uh, I'm sure. Right. Okay. But anyway, so the first thing I do, I know that demonic equals sixty three. The first thing I do, if you don't mind going to the uh, calculator I'm head, again, I'm heading over there. It's like that's yeah. exactly what I want to see. First and, thing you got to do is type in Anne Hesh. You want, uh, you know, I wanted to see what her name is. Yeah. How about that? How old was she when she died? Oh, oh boy. You know, out of all the things I looked up, I oh, she was fifty three. <laughs> oh, she was fifty three. Yeah, okay. I had a whole thing on fifty three. Uh, so yeah, it's like it's, they had her zipped up, and she did like a yeah. one eighty, and like yeah. uh, I'm not. Wow, Steve, that's pretty good. So, yeah, so so we're getting good at that. <laughs> see? She tried, and then they stuffed her in back in. But so I see that Ann Hayes equals sixty three, and ambulance sixty three. Something's going on here, right? So this happened on a Friday. Friday equals 63. She was driving a Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper equals 63. Uh, Mini equals 63. Cooper equals 36. And her name equals 63 and 36. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, hold on. I want it. Oh, she has a son named James Tupper, whose name... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. She has a son with an ex named James Tupper, whose name is 63. Her other ex is Coleman Lafoon. His first name equals 63. Uh, and then, you know, you, there's a bunch of articles that come out and you just, you just take the quotes, uh, like they'll do it in the headlines. They'll, you know, you'll see a headline and they'll have a quote. And one of the quotes would be like, she has all this quote, support and love. And that equals 63 and 180 and her name equals 63 and 180. So, you know, was she intoxicated? I don't know the whole story of this. So they, they were, they were talking about, uh, first of all, there's a picture of her with a bottle of vodka in the okay. car. And they suspected she was drinking, but then later they said she wasn't drinking. She was on cocaine. Oh. Put in there cocaine. Yeah. Let's see that. Oh. Maybe not. So I, I, can tell, I can tell you, if you put in vodka and cocaine, because that's the two substances they kept mentioning. Yeah. Vodka. Yeah. And cocaine. The word cocaine. and or just and or just cocaine. <laughs> Just vodka and cocaine. Okay. Sure, like write the whole phrase out. Am I am I, am I spelling it right? C O C A I N E. I C O C A I N E. Oh. Yeah, wait. just cocaine. Is that cocaine? I never did cocaine before. You know what the you know what the thing I hate about today's cocaine is the smell of it. Oh, okay. What? You You're not supposed to smell it. The day the... <laughs> sorry. Wait, sorry, cocaine. sorry, 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 yeah. no, no. So vodka right. and? and cocaine, cocaine, vodka and cocaine. All right. You see how it equals 85. Yeah. That was her crash date, August 5th. Oh. And then if you go back or we don't have to go back, but you actually pointed it out that the other vehicle next to her was E 43. Yeah. So if you write E 43, it equals 58. She's from Aurora, Ohio, which equals 58, like the 5th of August, the date of her accident, five, eight. She was an actress who, uh, actress equals 85 in Gematria. And check this out from her mom's May 10th birthday to the August 5th accident is exactly 149 days. She turned 85. Now look, E43 equals 149. Aurora, Ohio, where she's from equals 149. She was an organ donor. Organ donor equals 149. And again, from her mom's birthday to that accident date is exactly 149 days. That's pretty crazy. Or any, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and she grew up in an Amish community. Amish equals eighty-five. She was on life support equals eighty-five. She was brain dead equals eighty or brain dead equals fifty-eight. I'm sorry, life support equals fifty-eight. So it's just that date just keeps bouncing back and forth, you know. I'm gonna tell you something. For someone who was brain dead, they seem to be moving just fine. Yeah, she was pretty spry. I thought so as well. And I did not see any. Uh, now, understand. I know it's a little bit distance, but you would see. Something dark or bright red, but her arms looked okay in that. I said she was burning for at least 40 minutes. 40 minutes? She had hair. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> and, but, but again, she was in a body bag. So, all right, so that's a weird thing. Is All right, she's in a body bag. There's no paramedics taking her to that thing. It, the other thing is when she does come out of it, she, like you said, she's very spry. Yeah, Her it looks like she's looks, trying to get away. Yeah, and she looks like she's trying to get away. Like she knows what's up. 
And but like if you're burning for 45 minutes and they're, you're in a, uh, uh, you know, you're going to the hospital, wouldn't you be like, ah, oh, thank God. <laughs> but no, not her. I mean, unless she's, she's like, like uh, Wolverine and healed and yeah, could be. And that's what they're covering up. Possible, uh, possible. I don't know. I mean, and if you're saying 40 to 45 minutes, dude, yeah, that, that's she would not have hair. She'd that. be pretty like me with this right, nice bald they, head. They say that it took the firefighters 20 minutes to find her and then 20 minutes to rescue her. But if you know Gematria, you know when you write out death, it equals 20. So, there, I mean, it's riddled with this stuff. You really? Know? Oh, yeah. Why would, like, I guess I, I don't know enough about, like, the cabal, right? Yeah. Um, but, like, why would they, uh, I guess human sacrifice is just something that they might do. They might just uh, just decide to do. Hundred percent. Okay, and <laughs> and they'll just like randomly pick somebody and be like, you know. Well, that's the thing. Is it random, or is there something? Or is it all about the numbers? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I think it's the. I think it's about the numbers. Who, who, which person fits whatever ritual they're trying to do? You know. Weird. This is now. This one here is just weird. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, it's it's pretty dark. It's pretty scary. It is. Actually. It is. Do you have a, a? Are we still doing an? Or do you want to move on to another one? You know what? Uh, we were a little, uh, you know, we were in Kobe for a while there, so I kind of wanted to get to one more. Doug, you have a third interesting story for us. Who is it about now? Okay, so uh, on September 8th, the Queen of England died. Mm. Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah. I kind of want to get into her. So, oh, that came out wrong. So, anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something, but I stopped. Go ahead, though. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, the. You uh, just killed Steve over there. You see him just like laughing. I'm not going to be good for the rest of the show. <laughs> I, thought I'd, I thought I'd slip that one in. Oh, I missed. Oh, anyways, there uh, you go. Anyways, <laughs> slip that one in. So, yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. So continue. check this out. The Queen right. dies on September 8th, and that's the date that the Catholics celebrate as the birthday of the Virgin Mary. Okay. M meanwhile, uh, Britain's new Prime Minister Liz Truss she assumed office. Uh, on as the new prime minister on September 6th or 9 6, and two days later, the queen would be dead on September 8th at 96 years old. And if you write out Queen Elizabeth the second, can you write that out? Uh, yeah, I put in second, mind? but um, uh, but put, the, put, the, the, put the I I Queen Elizabeth the I I like Roman numeral second. That's interesting because like the word second 96, then I yeah, I use, again letters into numbers, it's, it's right. The thing. Do you see how it equals ninety six? Uh, Queen Elizabeth. The I I. I. Yeah, the I I. Oh, the I I. Okay. Yeah. Right. Huh. Dead at dead at ninety six. And then the key here is the print. Uh, the prime minister is announced two days before. So here's where it gets interesting. If you write out two days, it equals twenty six. Queen equals twenty six. Crown equals 26, royal equals 26. Her cause of death was old age equals 26. She was born in 1926. Uh, oh, and then she began her reign as queen on February 6th, like 2 6. And mm -hmm. then she was coronated, which is like crowned, but coronated. If you write out corona, it equals 96, but she was crowned on the 2nd of June, like 2 6 again. But look at those dates. February sixth uh, and June second. You can flip them around. They could be two six and six two, both of them. Right. And then if you write out Queen, it equals sixty two and twenty six, and Crown equals sixty two and twenty six. And if you take her coronation date, uh, June sixth, nineteen fifty three, and add each number together, it would equal twenty six. Wow. Crazy stuff. Oh yeah. Here, wow. More on yeah. that. So from her. Uh, September 8th death is two months and six days before her son, Charles, uh, November 14th birthday. She died 26 weeks after her youngest son's birthday. That's Prince Edward. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to close with this because some, this stood out to me while I was putting this presentation together. That kid, she died 26 weeks after his birthday, Prince Edward. His birthday is March 10th, just like Anne Heche's mom. And I was like, huh, that's weird. How old did he turn? Remember, Anne Heche's mom turned 85 on that day. This dude turned 58. Again, mm. Anne Heche's accident date. So I was like, 
what what a coincidence, <laughs> right? Is that is there something there? And then I wanted to close with that I actually did end up finding that something was there. So I thought that was weird. Oh yeah, definitely. Wow. This and then you know the um, the whole thing behind Queen Elizabeth, you know, her whole life. Uh, I, I have to put this out there. It's because my wife, I, my wife, maybe watched the whole Queen Elizabeth thing, The Crown. You ever see the show The Crown? I never I, saw it. it. Heard of it. Rough life. I mean, not like the rough, like being poor, thing like that. But uh, she always just kind of kept it together with all everything that was presented to her through the long time that she was queen. And uh, what'd you say? Yeah. Fifty three, she became queen. I forget the age that she was. That was Anne Hatch's death uh, age. No, no, no. The year that she became queen was I oh, think yeah. 26. Oh, yeah. hey, hey, you just did another one. The year she became queen was Anne Hayes' death age, 53. Oh, weird. Yeah. Good catch. I just did another one. Look at me, Steve. <laughs> I'm getting You're good, dude. You're All good. Right. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. <laughs> so a, couple, a, couple, a couple more quick ones, and then, I, and then I'll close. Uh, All right. Sounds good. With how the queen is actually connected to Anne Hayes' death. That's pretty crazy. So uh, quick ones. Uh, from uh, the Pope's December 17th birthday to the Queen's death was exactly 38 weeks. And there's that number again, death 38, murder 38, killing 38, to kill 38, RIP 38. But from his uh, birthday to her death was exactly 266 days. And her, the Queen's uh, husband, Prince Philip, died on April 9th, the day leaving 266 days in the year. Also, April 9th is the 99th day of the year, and that guy died at 99 years old. Hmm. And then uh, just know that she died on the 251st day of the year, and ritual sacrifice equals 251. Hold on. Now, rituals, now somebody actually typed in ritual sacrifice. Type in ritual sacrifice, Steve. By the way, I also use a day calculator you can Google where it'll – Type in, uh, I believe it's timeanddate.com, and you you can type in any the month, day, year to whatever date you want, and it'll tell you the weeks, days. It'll tell you the hours, minutes. It's pretty awesome. I went to a Chicago public school. Is this sacrifice? Sacra, <laughs> sacred, sac, sacrifice? S A C R I E R I, right? I yeah. had it right. F I C E. Sacrifice. Okay. So ritual sacrifice. Well, you know, Okay. It one equals two fifty one. Yeah. And then September eighth is the two hundred fifty first day of the year. All right. Let me ask you this, Doug. Did, did yeah. you ever uh do anything on Elvis at all? Uh no, actually. But I'm sure there's something there because Oh, I'm, I'm sure there is, man. I would I would like to know that one next time we uh, yeah. do a show with you if you can uh, bring that in. Real quick, I'll tell you. Um if you uh you remember the twenty seven club? How all those uh, singers and artists, they all died at 27. Like oh, yeah, Wilson, yeah, yeah, Joplin, yeah. Yeah, Hendrix, Cobain, Winehouse even, all those guys. If you write out ritual, it equals 27. Really? Now, that is something weird, man, because yeah, I remember 187 Club. 45 again. Yeah, ritual. Who was the last one to be put in that? Was that Amy Winehouse in the 27 Club? I believe so. I don't yeah, know I offhand, so. but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Huh. That's so, stuff. yeah, yeah, it's all pretty interesting. But I have one more thing I want to close on where I'm actually going to connect Anne H and the Queen because it was popping up to me and I was like, is there something there? And I found, uh, so anyways, I'm, I, I got this, you know, all ready to go. I'm about to, you know, we're going to film this today. I'm ready to go. And it just so happened that my buddy sent me a text last night and it's some click. So right now, I'm not sure when this is going to come out. But right now, the, uh, the, the big show that everybody's talking about, the number one show, is Dahmer on uh, Netflix. Yes, yes. And it actually, in fact, is one of the most watched shows in the history of Netflix, right? So, but there was a movie in 2017, the last thing about Dahmer, right? It was called My Friend Dahmer. Guess who played his mom? Anne Hatch. Anne Hatch. Yeah. Not the queen. It, not the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Hayes played Jeffrey Dahmer's mom in the last movie about Dahmer. And when you write out Joyce Dahmer, it equals 53, like her death age. And really? Joyce equals 58, like her accident date. Okay. And that movie came out, my friend Dahmer, on April 21st. That's the Queen's birthday. 
Huh. And if you and if you write out Jeffrey Dahmer, it equals seventy. The Queen ruled for seventy years. So then I'm like, well, when did Dahmer come out? The Netflix one. It came out on September twenty first of twenty twenty two, and that's the day that leaves one hundred and one days left in the year. A one hundred and one is the twenty sixth prime number. That's the Queen's number. Prime numbers uh, divisible. The only a uh, number that's only divisible by one in itself, and one hundred and one is the twenty sixth number like that. And then this is really, on. really, I hold mean, on. and then ahead. the last thing, the last thing. So then I'm like, I go to the day calculator. I'm like, well, what, what day, what was, how many days from the queen's birthday to Anne Heche's accident date? It was exactly 107 days. Then I look and see how many days from Anne Heche's birthday to the queen's death date. You guessed it exactly 107 days. And that wow. movie that she was in came out in 2017. And also, if you drop the zero, God equals 17. So, yeah, there's some interesting stuff going on. Here. That is just weird, man. Now, all these numbers, yeah. things. And I, and I just found this out last night. And I was like, oh, man, I got to put this in. Huh. All right. Well, I, I have to admit, this has been interesting, especially the Anne Hesh thing. The Anne Hesh thing, man, I just, there's Crazy. something weird about the whole thing, man. Yeah, there's something sacrifice. behind the scenes that's going on there. And I don't know what it is, and I'll probably never, ever know. But it is yeah. very weird. Steve, yeah. do you have anything? No, I mean, I'm just going to be on this site all day today, <laughs> typing look, stuff and in. You can, do it. <laughs> if you can go and look at past stories that you find interesting, like John Bonet Ramsey, like a, a, anything that was a big story. And, dude, use the Gematri calculator, type in names, look at their birth dates, look, look, uh, use the day calculator, how many days from their birth date to their death date, and you'll start seeing stuff. It's, it's pretty wild. That is weird. All right, yeah. Doug. Well, thanks for coming on today, man. I really do appreciate uh, you. Just so we thank know. Thank you for uh, having me. Oh, of course, dude. Uh, we're going to have uh, Doug back sometime in the future because we're going to be talking about more uh, like conspiracy theories and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. So we want to bring wait. him back in the near future on some next shows. So I, I'm hoping that Doug will become a regular on the show and we can uh, do some really cool subject matter. I so, want to dive into uh, predictive programming a little more. Uh, yeah, and yeah, like uh, yeah. media and then putting so like the Simpsons stuff that everybody talks about, you know? Yeah. yeah like kind of mind cool. control stuff. Right. Yep. Mm. All right. Well, that's enough for today, boys and girls. My name is Neil Gibbons and that is Steve Lineweber. And we are the paranormal guys podcast. Oh, and by the way, boo. <laughs> <laughs>